it's Ashley Wyland. You are currently listening to Hank Jr. in Hank's Corner. Thanks for tuning in today. Hope you enjoy the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another special episode of Hank's Corner. I am your host, Hank Jr., part of Hank Jr. Productions, where you know I'm documenting life's moments through photography, videography, and, of course, over now 100 episodes in podcasting. And uh, I always say all my episodes are special because they are, because I get to meet such great people out there. But this is doubly special because I am celebrating my birthday. Uh, I think it's probably the 25th anniversary of my 21st birthday. Uh, <laughs> Um, I don't want you to do the math. Uh, uh, instead, I want you to focus on my next guest, which I'm so honored to have here on my birthday. Uh, she's got three albums out. Her recent I'm Gonna Ride is doing really well. She's got over three quarter of a million followers on Facebook alone. Uh, please welcome to the to the show, Ashley Wine. And Ashley, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me. Happy birthday. I'm so well, excited to be here for a special episode. Yes, I'm excited to have you. When I heard that this was going to happen, I'm like, perfect artist to be on my birthday. Like I said, Aww. they're all special, but this uh, this works out great because, uh, you know, I've been kind of following you for a while, and I've seen a lot of the live streams that you do, and, uh, you know, here, probably about at least a year I've been following you, and now here you are on Hank's Corner, so wonderful. Yeah, excited to be here. Thanks for having me. And not only did you get to make it here for my birthday, but, uh, you know, you've been very busy out there with like at least an eight week tour that's been going on. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I mean, at this point, we are heading well into month three of being out here on the road. And it's been great. Um, my rolling on tour started in the springtime. So we did a couple little runs um, there. But right now we are in the midst of our summer run, which is about four months long. So it's August. So I've been out here since end of May, early June. And it's been it's been incredible, honestly. Like we have been so excited to play all the different places that we have. Um, we've gotten to spend a lot of quality time thus far in the Midwest and hang out with all of our friends there. We just played Cheyenne Frontier Days, which, holy cow, what an experience. Mm -hmm. We are so excited to be a part of all those festivities. Um, but we are, from here on out, making our way through, like, Iowa and hanging out with our friends in North Carolina and Florida, as well as a bunch of other places in between those. So it's been a really awesome tour thus far. Like you said, we've definitely been busy, um, but I it's been a very rewarding and I'm very thankful to have all the experiences that we've had so far on the road this year. Yeah. And you're not slowing down anytime soon. I've checked a little bit out of your calendar. And uh, for those that have been following my show for a while know that I broadcast my little corner somewhere in the Tampa Bay area and you're coming to Florida in September. Yes. Yeah, actually, um, until October, my last like show kind of out on the road before we head back towards Arizona is in St. Augustine, Florida, at the Colonial Oak Live Music Park, uh, which we got to play for the first time last year. And it was incredible. And people came in from all over, not just in Florida, but also from other states come see us at that show. So it's a really cool venue. So we're excited to be back this year. Yeah. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it's it's been a while, but uh, yeah, the last time I think that I saw you in Florida, did you hit one of the theme parks while you were here? <laughs> yeah, it actually worked out uh, really well. I have a lot of family in Florida as well. So we uh, played our last show at uh, the St. Augustine Colonial Music Park. And then my mom came into town. She was celebrating her birthday. And we were like, you know what? Why don't we celebrate the end of tour and the, the whole birthday shenanigans with a trip to Disney World, which isn't always, you know, the end of tour celebration. But man, that would be a solid tradition for sure. <laughs> oh, definitely. And anytime you mention the word Disney, my wife's ears perk up. So she's her ears are perking up right now because uh, she is a huge Disney fan. And, you know, that's half of the reason why we moved to Florida is just so that we can get passes to go there. So uh, anytime I, I bring that up, she she loves that. But, you know, you said that she been all over the place you know what are some of your favorite places that you've been to and why we've had the pleasure of playing like for this year a lot of really incredible places so just to name some for this year because i've been touring for seven years so there's a bunch of places that i really have loved playing over the years but um cheyenne frontier days in wyoming jackson hole wyoming wyoming street does very well this year with um fantastic shows we got to play 
um, a downtown Thursday night series. So like our crowds that we had in Tomo, Wisconsin were just incredible. We were so excited to be a part of that event. Um, but, you know, I, I can just anticipate based off of last year, like our friends in Florida have always treated as well as especially like North Carolina. Um, I'm excited to head over that way. Um, Illinois was also really fantastic to us. So, I mean, everywhere has like their own flavor of crab. And if I could just name a few off the top of my head, those are some that I would totally say, like just took the cake. Yeah, and, and that's awesome. And, and I love the pun that's intended, cake. You know, I'm going to uh, have a little bit of Yay! cake later on uh, uh, this evening. But, uh, you know, all those places that you get to go. And, of course, like I said, your latest album is I'm Going to Ride, which kind of fits into, you know, you're riding around the country and doing that. Uh, you know, tell me a little bit about this album. So this album truly is one of those ones that came so deeply from the heart and to be real honest with you, a lot of the songs on this album were written in a time of like, I would say trial and tribulation. Life was just throwing a bunch of different things at me. And um, I was just feeling like, how am I supposed to get through all of this? And so a lot of the songs on the album speak to my experiences of overcoming all those trials and hardships as well as just kind of being like the motivational songs that I needed at the time, the little pep talks uh, that were coming all around me as far as like how to pull myself through. Um, there's some really fun tunes in there, such as like Cheater Cheater. And um, of course, I'm going to ride, like I said, is the pinnacle anthem for the whole message of the album. But it truly is one that came from a very, very deep and personal place. And I feel like Obviously, all my albums have me inside of every single song, but if I had to say there was any project so far that I've done that's been really reflective of myself personally and parts of my journey um, that are just really, really personal, this is that album. Yeah, and we're going to get to the, uh, you know, the title track a little bit later on in the podcast, but I want to go ahead and play your most recent song, I'm Going Home, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about it. Yeah. All right. Been a lost and lonely vagabond Coping with no end in mind Drifting through the seas of life Hoping to find That special place finally Pulling me and its embrace and For the first time in my whole life Felt it happen today I'm going home Where the light is stronger Where if the days went longer I wouldn't mind Where love isn't selfish and kind 
'Cause I'm finally home, where the light is stronger, where if the days went longer, I wouldn't mind. Where love isn't selfish and cold, and peace of mind is. To Hank's Corner, you just heard Ashley Wyland, who is celebrating my birthday here today, and that is her latest song, "I Am Going Home." And uh, you know, we just talked a lot about the traveling. So, those that are tuning into the uh, live broadcast of this, why don't you tell us where you're tuning in from? Uh, I love to see because we have people from all over the places. We have people, you know, all countries and everything. So, uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, but uh, as far as you know, this song. Uh, this song in particular, tell us a little bit about I'm Going Home. So as I kind of talked about with just the album in general, it's got a very personal flavor to it. But this song, honestly, um, I know I'm going to write us. It was kind of like the anthem overall message of the album. But this song right here, if I had to say which one was like the closest, deepest in the heart, hits very close to home for me, it was this song right here. And it honestly came about in such a different way than how I typically go about writing songs. Um, as I kind of mentioned, that life was throwing me a bunch of different things at the time. And I had lost family members while I was out on the road. I was dealing with a lot of just kind of chaos and bad people on the whole like backside of things um, in business and personal life and all that sort of stuff. And I being I was on the road at the time too, so I feel like everything I just didn't have time to really process and sort through all these different emotions that I was feeling. And a couple weeks after losing my great aunt, who I had a very unique relationship with, um, I woke up one morning on the road and I just had all these words on my heart, and it was the weirdest thing. It was like, just whoop, woke up, bright eyed, ready to say something. And I just had this feeling where I was like, I need to grab my phone and I just need to type because this is weird. So I grabbed my phone and I started typing and typing and typing until all the words felt like they were done coming out. And when I sat back and I looked at all these words, I said, whoo, whoa, whoa, whoa. First and foremost, that's a song. But secondly, I felt like everything that was written in there was almost like kind of a message from a higher power kind of coming down and giving me the words that I needed to hear in that time and giving me the peace and uh, the comfort that really looking back on it, I needed at the time. And when I went to go take this into production, I said, you know, I and not changing a single thing. Usually songs go through a couple edits or whatever. I was like, nope, we're not touching a single thing with this song. It's going to be done just the way it's written. I already had like a strong melody in mind. I was like, we will make the music fit around the melody. This is clearly how it wanted to come out. And so we are going to do it justice and do it the way that, in my opinion, God intended it to be. So this one came to light. Honestly, it's been years in the making. Um, I actually wrote the song back in 2018. Um, so the fact that it's finally just now in 2023, being able to make its way onto the stage, come to light. I'm so excited. And I was so very blessed that we got to do a music video for it. But even better yet, it also has its Spanish counterpart with Acaso Voy. So it's done in Spanish. The Spanish version also has its own music video as well, which I thought was really important. And just the amount of work and love that my team poured into this, uh, I think just speaks to really how special it is to everybody. And I'm so excited that it's finally out into the world and I'm able to share it. 
Yeah, and I was going to ask you about that Spanish version because that's, you know, kind of unique. There's a few artists that I've had on the show. Like I said, I've had over 100 now, which I'm doing, you know, kind of proud that I've gotten that many. But, you know, you're probably about the third artist that has done both an English and a Spanish version of their song. Tell me, do you speak Spanish? Uh, yes. So while uh, I am definitely need to practice more because I'm a little, little, little rusty, but I definitely do speak. I do understand it and stuff. And um, really the decision for doing this particular song in Spanish really came about because during 2020 and kind of that whole period of life, um, I noticed a really strong increase in my global fan base in general, but um, a majority of those people came from Spanish speaking countries. And I am a firm believer that music is a uniting and um, powerful force in that nature and that it really just transcends all bounds of language and it's really just pure feeling. But I wanted to cross over into that area and be able to communicate the message of this song with a whole new group of people who I knew were already engaged in what I was doing and the music that I was putting out. And um, the response that I've had from my Spanish speaking community fans has just been so wonderful and so beautiful. And they were so excited um, to have that come out and for us to have a connection like that through music. So I was doubly grateful that we really put forth the effort to do this song justice in its Spanish form and then to also be able to connect to that side of our community. Yeah, that's great. And I like the way you said it, that, you know, music does bring us together and it does transcend borders. And, you know, sometimes I'll go overseas and, you know, they, they, they don't know how to speak a word of English, but they can sing the songs in English yeah. perfectly. But, uh, you know, that's great that you were, you know, able to do that with such fluency. And it was great to hear. I mean, we, we just played the English version, but those that are watching, when you get the chance and we're done, go out and see the uh, Acasa Boy uh, video. And, you know, to me, it's a little special as well, because uh, those that know me, I grew up in South Texas, and uh, we had a lot of Tejano music down there. And uh, so, you know, I knew all the, uh, you know, the 80s and 90s bands of the Tejano music. And, uh, you know, kind of just reminds me of that era of me growing up. Yeah, no, I definitely, personally, am also a very big fan of that genre of music and stuff. Um, and I love to see different cultures and different sounds, like, all blend together in music. I think that's something really fun um, that music does, is it can cross over into so many different things and create so many different, like, sounds and flavors for people to enjoy. So I started to dip my toe into that world with uh, Akash Savoy and hopefully look forward to doing it more again in the future. Yeah, definitely you got to do that. And uh, we're going to go ahead and play the title track of the album, I Am Gonna Ride, and we'll come back. We're going to talk about how you got to where you are today. job done. I'm gonna run.
To Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr., you know, part of Hank Jr. Productions, where I'm documenting those life moments, even on my birthday. And my special guest is uh, Ashley Wyland, who I found out is pretty much bilingual. So uh, that's 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 pretty awesome. And, uh, you know, have you ever done an interview in Spanish? That, that would be tough. I have not had the pleasure of doing a full-on interview in Spanish, but I anticipate one in the future, and I am prepping every day for it. All right. Well, that would be awesome. I got to check that out. But tell us a little bit about it. I mean, take me back to the days like, you know, when you were 14 or even before that, when you started, you know, your career, what made you want to become a musician? You know, I always say it's one of those things that's like it was a true snowball effect. I didn't come out of the womb going, I want to be a singer. I want to do all this stuff. Um, but I did know from a very young age that one, I had a love for performing. I didn't care what medium it was in, whether it was dance or um, I did figure skating growing up. So competing and doing that or, you know, music is what kind of came a little bit later down the line. I just knew that I love to do creative things and I love to do them in front of people. Um, so I kind of just followed that passion down its pipeline. I had the pleasure of starting my music education in grade school when I was like nine years old, I started off as a trumpet player. So started uh, putting my musical roots in there. And then as I had opportunities to kind of explore through like school choir and um, family karaoke nights and stuff, I kind of got into this group of like, oh, you know, singing and music's really fun. It kind of combines all these different creative performance elements that I really love. Um, and then as I kind of got into my early teenage years, I had more opportunities come up where I got to learn how to do songwriting and um, got to work in a studio and do all those different things. And that really is what started um, the itch that has led me to where I am here. And I truly attest to uh, my growth and being where I currently am in my career to the fact that I just follow that feeling of like, ooh, something new, something exciting, something new to learn. Let's follow that. Let's explore that. Let's see what we can do with that. And uh, honestly, if, like I said, it's a snowball thing as opportunities have come up, just taking them and it's just grown and grown and grown more and more over the years. Yeah. Having that feeling of, you know, something come to you and say, let's just go with it, you know, never lose that feeling because once you do, then you you know, that, that's pretty much it. You, you got to have that drive, so to speak, you know, and that's awesome to see you, know, you young people that I get the chance to talk to and you just have so much drive. And I remember I used to have that. And when you get older, it's kind of like, OK, well, I'll let everybody else have that drive. But it's so inspiring to see, you know, when, when people have that. So, so don't lose that. And as far as musical influences, tell us a little bit about who were yours. Oh, goodness. I feel like I grew up with like a whole modge podge of different eras of country music that influenced me growing up um so you know thanks to like my grandparents and stuff i definitely grew up with a lot of the like classical um country eras like i'm talking you know as early as 40s and 50s country music and listening to those artists to the influences of like dolly parton 
and all the outlaws to 90s women's powerhouses like Martina McBride and I love Jody Messina and Pam Tillis and all those gals who just had like so much spitfire to them. Um, and then of course, you know, being the age that I am, I grew up in the early 2000s as well. So um, early Carrie Underwoods and Miranda Lamberts and all of those gals too who came onto the scene during that time, I feel like really strongly influenced the type of music one that I enjoy, but also even how I perform, how I like to sing and all that sort of stuff. The big powerhouse vocals is really what I grew up with and a strong sense of storytelling is really what drew me towards country music is it's like, it's the one genre that I feel like regardless of who's singing, what it is that we're talking about, we're telling a story, like a very clear and vivid story from start to finish. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. And, you know, that's probably the one reason why I was probably drawn to country music as a, as a kid. It's just the storytelling. I mean, you do have some fun music in the country as well. And, you know, other genres have it. But, you know, the, the thing about country is, you know, you go all the way back to the original uh, Hank Williams and, and things like that and George Jones. And they just really, with their music and their voices, just kind of ripped your heart out. And, you know, it made you feel bad, but it made you feel good at the same time. And, and that's what really drew me in. And, and then, of course, the 90s was such a fun time uh, with that country music. So, yeah, definitely a lot of uh, influences that uh, come out like that. Now, um, as far as your social media, like I mentioned, you're doing really well on social media. What do you attest the success to? Um, well, honestly, I would say if nothing else, it's been a sense of consistency and connection, honestly, from the time that I started music. Um, obviously it was really when like Facebook was really getting onto the scene and stuff. So we kind of jumped on that, um, train early and started working that and building a true grassroots following through an online presence. And I've always been a firm believer since day one, that connecting with the people who are wanting to know what you're up to and the type of music that you're putting out and stuff has been so like pinnacally important. Um, so I make a strong effort to go through and comment on as many people's comments as possible. If people have questions, I want to answer them. Um, or if, you know, somebody leaves a really lovely comment about how much they enjoy the work that I'm putting out or whatever, I want to make that connection with people. And it's truly paid off in dividends because the greatest joy for me is being able to see people who, you know, really follow me closely online, then come out in person and see the live shows and get to have that experience where it's like, oh, I already feel like I know you because we've already engaged so much over social media that it's like just being able to put a real face and a person to, you know, a profile name and a picture is just like that combining moment. And then on top of that all, it's really become a community in the sense that the coolest things that I get to experience are meeting those people online and then those online people meeting the other people that they see online in the comment sections all the time and then come together and then form friendships in real life like to me that sense of community and connection is like the coolest and most important part of it all yeah and uh you know you, you talk about that connection and i've seen that in the live streams you know you you've done a lot of live streams and, and i think you know there's few artists out there that I've gotten a chance to talk with that have actually mastered that like you do. Like you said, there's a lot of people that are commenting and I know you're going through, you're reading those comments, you're trying to, uh, you know, vocally respond and then go back and write that. And, and that's such a great thing because, uh, you know, the fans really do appreciate that. I, I know because when I grew up, there's no social media. You didn't get a chance to talk to, you know, the people that you liked. And now it's a whole different world. And, the artists that don't respond back are usually the artists that kind of just, you know, fade away and you, you don't hear much about them. But then the ones that, you know, Bill, like you said, the grassroots is, is, is doing really well. Yeah, I mean, I think especially more and more so as we you develop technology and everything, I feel like we all essentially create that sense of connection even more so now than ever. And however, which way we're able to accomplish that, I think is so incredibly special. And I think to the sense of its positive benefits, it has really allowed us to take everybody on every step of the journey to get to know us as artists personally, for us in order to get to know them, to get sneak peeks of like what's coming up ahead and the whole process behind it all. Um, because I think, you know, there is so much um, that's 
misunderstood or not understood at all about music as an industry and how it works. And especially, you know, for myself and anybody else who's an independent artist, like everything that it entails in order to do the work that we do, especially to the scale that we're trying to do it on um, and how much work goes into that and how much love and labor and usually very small teams to help support it all. Um, being able to take people on that journey and connect with them that way and show them that other side of it, I think adds a whole new level of appreciation for music, but also a whole new layer of connection as well. Yeah, I agree. And uh, we're going to go ahead and play Cheater Cheater and then come back and talk about a few things and wrap it up. Excuse me? Don't look at me like you don't understand what I'm talking about. I saw you to the other night while you were around, sneaking around. 2 a.m. Holding each other in the movie theater parking lot. Did you think I wouldn't know about your games and all the lies you try to play? I want to hear what you have to say. Cheater, cheater. And you just heard Ashley Wineland's Cheater Cheater, one of the fun songs that I like listening to. It's just got such a good beat that, uh, you know, it kind of gets stuck in my head. And that's a good thing when it does. But uh, I definitely enjoy that, uh, you know. And, uh, you know, here we are. Um, I'm celebrating my birthday. And, uh, you know, one of the things I always get to have to talk about is food. And, and today I, I, I got my cake little here. It's a German chocolate cake, which is my favorite cake since I've... Um, you know, been growing up. But tell me, what is your favorite cake for your birthday? Oh, gosh. Usually for me, I tend to venture towards like a strawberry cake with cream cheese frosting. That's typically my go-to. But German chocolate, I'm a chocolate kind of gal. So you, know, you can't go wrong with that. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, you said strawberry. And for my wife, it's usually the strawberry shortcake is usually what we get her. And that's really good. So, uh, you know, we have a, a Jason's Deli, which is kind of a national chain. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of them, but they have some great uh, strawberry shortcake. And that's usually where we get it from every year. Okay. And, and to continue with the food thing, like I said, I always have to talk about food is, you know, when you get to travel like you do, what are some of the foods that you get to look forward to in all these different states that you really like? There's there's a lot. So a lot of the different places that we play, uh, you know, have particularly 
a lot of great barbecue. <laughs> so we get to try all the different regional kind of barbecue styles and stuff. Um, so that's obviously one thing that I personally look forward to, um, particularly when we head up towards like Illinois and that kind of area. We get to try all different sorts of pizzas and, you know, all, all the stuff that it is t traditionally like not good for you, but like it's good for your soul, the soul food. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I like that. If it's not good for you, it's good taste. And I've always uh, uh, said that. And, uh, you know. When you're out there on the road, though, I mean, I'm sure there's got to be some downtime. And, and I know musicians are always like, you know, still trying to work on the craft and everything. But what are some of the things that you're doing out there for fun? Um, well, if, in the rare instance that we have some downtime that isn't being utilized towards working on other things that we can't do when we're in full on like tour mode. Um, I really do love to try to get into the towns that we're playing in, or at least the towns that we're passing through to try to see um, some of the like special little monuments or, you know, kind of touristy spots that they have. Like we just drove through uh, South Dakota not too long ago. And for anybody who's ever been through South Dakota, in particular around the Badlands, like, you know, they have wall drug that you see billboards for for like 600 miles if you're coming from the other side of south dakota before you actually get there so stopping in at like those little places is something that we try to do along the way um particularly for me i love like little farmers markets and getting like fresh produce from different areas just because it can't be beat anywhere else but uh if it's not necessarily in the sense of like exploring per se i really do try to just decompress as much as possible so i have like my little hobbies um like i love to knit and crochet and you know play games every now and then but more often than not particularly because if i'm not doing a show i'm in this bus right here driving around i try to get outside and walk around and just experience the beauty and the nature of everything around me yeah, you say driving around. So, you know, I've been listening to your music for a while, but you're actually going to be now the on the, uh, you know, Hank's Corner playlist official because you're, you're, you're finally a guest. But uh, tell me, while you are driving around, who is on your playlist? Who we listen to a wide variety of things here on the road, particularly, though, if there's anything that's coming through the speakers, it's either one or like master playlist for our tour songs just so everybody can hear them and keep them fresh in the brain um or we're listening to country music of all different varieties new age older kind of more classic style country um and then thirdly more often than not in particular uh, we're listening to a lot of classic rock as we drive down the road it's just got good energy it's good highway driving music it keeps us awake uh, as we head on down the road and uh yeah, it just keeps everybody energized and in a particularly good mood. Yeah, I, I definitely know what that classic rock does, especially after a few hours. You just got to, you know, get jamming and, and, and keep going. So, you know, I, I do a lot of travel between here and Nashville, and, and, and I know. And I can only imagine, you know, the, the amount of traveling you're doing across the, uh, uh, you know, the big sky, sky states out there. Uh, now, like I said, I've seen you on the... Um, the live streams and hopefully i'll get to see you at some point performing live but should somebody come to your show what should they expect from an ashley wyland performance yeah well um for our performances you can always expect a very high energy show i am a huge fan of taking everybody away from the hustle and bustle of everyday boring and or crazy life and making it as enjoyable and as fun as possible. Um, so we do a little bit of a mix of everything. So of course you're gonna hear my music, stuff that's released and stuff that's not released, little, little insider stuff. People who come to the live shows get a little sneak peek of what music is coming out ahead. Um, but we also play a mixture of all different sorts of country songs that I really enjoy um, as well into the whole mix. So my favorites are more than likely your favorites. And so we all get to kind of share in those fun moments together between the covers and the originals and the unreleased stuff. So it's kind of a whole whole journey for sure. Uh, but it's definitely fun and it's definitely a, a whole lot of party the whole way through. Yeah, that definitely sounds like a great time. And now I definitely do want to come to your show even more than uh, I did before. But uh, you can, you know, find out where Ashley's going to be. She's got it on her social media and AshleyWine.com, which is down below. Uh, you know, check her out. First of all, follow her. And then hopefully, you know, you can catch her in one of the uh, uh, 
many places that she's playing. Like I said, I'm hoping to catch her here in Florida. But Ashley, you know, thanks so much for sharing my birthday with me today. It was such a great honor to talk to you. And uh, like I said, hopefully I get to see you out there in person. Yes, thank you so much for inviting me for your special birthday show. I, it was such a joy being here. I hope everybody who's watching, first of all, thank you for watching. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope to see you all at a future show, or if not, at least over on our online community spaces, chit-chatting and living it up. Drop me to train.